Hi, I'm Mark from Fluent Finance Abroad, and I'm very, very happy to say that I'm here today with a good friend of mine and fellow colleague and professional, Darren Windergauer from Inspired Homes Marbella. And we're going to have a quick chat to get to know a little bit more about Darren uh, and his business. Hi, Darren. Welcome. Hi, Mark. Thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about your background uh, and your work history. Well, I started off working in London in the late 80s. As I was a runner on the old stock exchange and then I worked my way up to become a trader and after that I then ran money on behalf of the bank so it would have been a pseudo hedge fund right. where we used the bank's resources to increase profit and then I became in charge of a team um, in European equities and then I quit and came down here. And you worked for some pretty impressive <coughs> banks, pretty well known banks. Yeah, I did uh, NatWest Market, Deutsche Bank. Bank of America. So when did you arrive in Spain? I arrived in Spain in 2001. In 2001. What was the reason? Not really sure to this day, to be honest, but I'd, I'd bought a holiday home down here off plan because a few other guys in the office were doing so and they felt it was a decent investment. So I flew down, bought a home. That was off plan, so it completed in, in 2001 and I just felt I needed a break from the, from the trading. So I came down here, uh, quit my job, came down here, and the rest is history, as they say. So when, when I first met you, you were still trading in Spain. You, you were able to trade in Spain? Is that yeah, right? I traded remotely, yeah. Well, okay. The technology improved sufficiently that we could trade remotely. Yeah. When did you start investing in, in property? Did you get involved in, in the UK? When I arrived here, I obviously I had the apartment that I'd already bought. I then purchased another one in La Quinta, in El Mirador, and we used that as an investment. Uh, and then we upgraded here and bought a, a villa, but I still kept the other apartment on. So technically I had two investment properties here. And how was that experience of investing in property in Spain? Compared to the UK, I actually would say it's slightly easier because there's no chains here. So once you get your deposit down and you sign the private purchase contract, you're pretty much locked in. So therefore you can make provisions, timelines, removal companies, and work towards a certain date. So, so what you're saying is once you've made your decision to go for it, it's quite, you can move quite quickly. Yeah, pretty straightforward. I mean, without a mortgage, you can close in six to eight weeks if you're a cash buyer. Obviously, as you know, with a mortgage, a little bit longer. Yeah. But it's, um, it's a really efficient system, to be truthful. So if you identify a property and you really like, you think it's a good deal, you can, you yeah, can go for it. You can jump on it, reserve it the next day. Uh, and then the process, due diligence takes a couple of weeks. Then you sign a formal contract and then we just wait for the closing date. Well, what, what was the decision process as to for you to officially get into the real estate business? It's all something I've been interested in. Uh, um, obviously coming from a financial background I was always interested in all sorts of assets um, and I worked for a couple of brokers down here yeah. learned the ropes so to speak so I did two years with a well-known company medium size and then another two years with another medium sized company and I just felt it was time to go on my own I've always been quite entrepreneurial I'm interested in how companies run yeah. behind the scenes as well return on investments return on equities so I felt it was the natural time to go on my own. We incorporated the company eight or nine years ago. And um, yeah, it's been an interesting ride. It, in general, it's been a good ride, but like any business, it had our ups and downs. And we went through COVID, so there were tricky moments. But uh, yeah, I don't regret it at all. It's been a real fun experience. Perfect. And um, so what areas are you specialist in, do you think, would you say? Really, we are experts in Benavis, Marabella and Estepona, um, the Golden Triangle as it's known. Okay, and if you get a client that was interested in, in, in another area or do you not get clients? Our marketing is targeted towards those areas, but if we do get a client ex uh, outside of those areas, we, we obviously would take them on, but if it was too extreme, like Nierja yeah. uh, or maybe Tarifa, we would just say it's not for us. So your main target areas is, is as you mentioned yeah, before. Exactly, so we're, we're a small team, there's three of us. We all live within the area. We understand the local schools. We've had children here, all born here. We understand the healthcare, the hospitals. So we feel we can add value to, to clients. And we, uh, uh, we tell them to lean on us, not just with buying the property, 
with all other aspects of, of emigrating to Spain. Yeah, it's quite a big decision, isn't it? Yeah. To invest in a, in a different country, so you need that extra. Yeah, and if you've got young children and they don't speak the language, you need healthcare, you need schooling. So it's a huge decision and we feel we're well qualified to help people with that on the basis we've had three children down here. Been to all the local schools, hospitals, etc. in one way or another. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I've heard a lot recently about this MLS system, multi-listing system. Do you, you guys work with, with those? Can you explain that a little bit to us? We do, yeah. It's, um, it's a system that allows us to list a property and then it allows us to share the property with other agents. So obviously we do lots of external marketing, but this really just goes out to other agents within the area. So it gets more, more hits for our vendors and, and it increases the profile of their property. So every time we list a property, we will put it onto the system. And then that will feed through to various other agents' websites as well. So it should become apparent everywhere on the, on the internet. Because clients come from all over the world. So, yeah. so that's why you, you, you collaborate with, with other agents, is that Absolutely, right? yeah, it is, yeah. And we wouldn't ha necessarily have enough of our own direct listings to satisfy the demand or meet the criteria. Of, of certain clients. So we reach out to other agents uh, with the aim of just finding the perfect property for our client. So our main ethos is to make sure the client's happy. And to do that, we involve as many other people as, as need to be in the process. For example, if I wanted to sell my property okay, yeah. through you. We would first we'd arrange to come around and value the property. Then we'd explain to you our marketing strategy, all the portals we're operating on so you feel assured that the property has enough coverage. We also do videos for every property, including drone and walkthrough videos. So, um, we have our own YouTube channel, Inspired Homes Model Hour. Yeah. Everything gets posted on there as well. So we aim to get maximum exposure for our vendors, if that's what they require. Some vendors prefer to try and sell the property softly, which obviously takes longer, but they don't want it known. Um, this happens typically high, in the higher end. Is that what you mean by softly, right? so yeah. more confidentially? Yeah, so we'll send it out to only segments of our database, people we know who have the capital, it fits their requirements, yeah. So you know that they're, they're ready to go? Yeah. As a person with a finance background like mm. you do, are you comfortable with talking to, to potential clients about mortgages in Spain, about using leverage or mortgage finance, how, how do you approach that? Yeah, look, obviously we're comfortable talking to clients, but I do specify to clients that we aren't experts and they should take independent advice. We, we aren't regulated, um, which I, I guess we're going to touch on later, but we are comfortable talking about where base rates are and we do advise clients to take a little bit of leverage up front because once you've purchased, it is much, much harder to refinance in Spain than it is in UK, for example. And so many of my clients are used to refinancing properties very quickly in the UK. And as you know, it just doesn't happen here. So I try and encourage them to take a little bit of leverage um, up front if the rates are, are correct for them. Yeah, because uh, not to decapitalize themselves. Absolutely, yeah. Because most of the, the typical profile of one of my clients will be a self-made businessman. So he'll have a business that's probably returning 25% return on equity. So it makes sense for him to borrow at three or 4% and put the excess funds back into his company and, and earn a higher return. Yeah. So it's just basic economics. Um, but we don't actually advise on the mortgages. In Andalusia, uh, real estate agents, there is no requirement for regulation. Um, do you think that real estate agents should be regulated? And um, what benefits do you think there would be if regulation came into, into force for the client and for the industry in general? I, th I think we should be regulated and I think we will within a few years. Uh, in terms of benefit for the clients, I think there's more credibility if they start dealing with an agent who's regulated. I think agents should probably take an exam. So there's a minimum level of service that any client can expect with any agent on the coast. And I think long term that will be good and healthy for, for, the, for the business. In general, yeah. In general. Good for the clients and good for the, for the standards uh, in, yeah. for the industry in general. I think it, it could encourage investment. I think the clients will have more peace of mind. 
and yeah, I think it'll be positive when it comes in, if it comes in. How do, how do you see this year going? Obviously, we've had a very bullish two or three years. I think the transactions will continue probably to slow this year. I think the price increases will slow, but the market's very, very solidly underpinned. There's a lack of quality stock. We still have buyers. The recent surge in interest rates over the last 18 months hasn't really deterred people. Lots more buyers moving down here for lifestyle. That's, that's the biggest theme. Whereas pre-COVID, it was holiday home. Now it's lifestyle. People want to relocate here. So the budgets have, have gone up. The requirements are slightly different as well. More space, maybe three, four bedrooms instead of two or three. So I think the market is solidly underpinned and I think it will probably continue to outperform European markets. Mm -hmm. Obviously I'm aware of rates have, have gone up quite considerably and I think there is a little bit of stress maybe in the lower end of the market. Okay. But in general, uh, people have a lot of equity in their homes. Uh, we're still getting a lot of European buyers but the biggest change is American buyers and they are taking the visas either digital nomad or golden. And I would say that's the single biggest jump. A huge number of North Americans, Canadian and American. So, and again, they're moving here for lifestyle, even though they have similar in their own country, they just, a lot of them have European heritage, so they like a European base. So the, the digital nomad mm. visa is something that's fairly, fairly new, that came out last year? Yes, it's been a year. Yeah. And you stay on your website, buying your new home should all be about the journey and experience you receive. Can you explain a little bit more as to, to sum up what is it that you uh, inspired Homes Marbella mean by that? Firstly, what I would say is once we've sold a property to a client, that's when the journey really begins. We're often friends with many of the clients we sell to, but we are there for them afterwards in terms of any help they need, um, be it administrative, just recommendations, restaurants, until they really settle in the country. And we have clients we sold to over nine years ago, and we're still friends them, with them now. They come around for barbecues, etc. So we like to, like we always say, the journey begins once they've bought the house. Um, and I think that's where we try and differentiate ourselves from, from other clients. Your unique selling points, I guess, would be the personal touch, the longevity of the relationship and the complexity of the transaction. I, I think it's an often overused word, bespoke, but I think the per personal touch is probably the right, right way to describe it. Yeah. We have very, very good relationship with our clients, even before they arrive in Spain. Multiple phone calls, sometimes Zoom calls. So we really feel like we understand them and their motivation to buy. And we ask lots of soft questions like, do they have grandchildren? So we try and build up a big picture of the clients and what their potential needs could be. Maybe needs that they haven't even felt that they need yet. So we're just trying to say one step ahead of them. Obviously we have the budget, the number of bedrooms, but there's a lot of soft questions around the outside that we really like to, to understand. Are they into sports, etc., etc. So we can build up a mental image of where we feel this client will be best suited. From, from our perspective, and the, one of the reasons why we wanted to bring you in here to, to get to know you a bit better is that we're very impressed with uh, the way you go about your work, your day-to-day -day work. You're very thorough. What's really impressive is the, the attention to detail that you, um, that you demand from us. Uh, and I think all the other, like your legal teams and everything else like that, I think is very impressive. And I don't, we don't see that a lot from other, from other real estate professionals here. So uh, that's one thing that I've noticed. And, uh, and so thank you. Okay, Darren, that was really, really insightful. And thank you very much for coming. Um, I hopefully get to see you soon. Pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. Mark. Bye-bye.